Okay, this one's a little bit about pressure switches on these gas furnaces and what's the correct vacuum they should have or pressure and what what causes pressure switch problems. Uh, why is a pressure switch put in a system? It's primarily put there so that the furnace will not operate in unsafe conditions. So a pressure switch is usually not a problem, it's an indicator of a problem. And uh, many times pressure switches are replaced. Sometimes they're replaced with general replacement pressure switches. And the general replacement pressure switch is adjusted so it works with the furnace the way it is. This is a no-no, guys. Uh, I know train will not accept liability if you put a general replacement pressure switch in one of their furnaces. I was told that by one of their reps. Try to always look at the pressure switch as an indicator of a problem somewhere else. I'm not saying pressure switches don't fail. What I'm saying is they should be the last uh, part to be replaced, not the first. I think the first thing that I would do when a pressure switch problem is indicated by the uh, integrated furnace control, what I would be looking for the obvious things. You listen. Is there any noise coming from here, a water noise? That would indicate a drain problem. Uh, you would check your vent. Uh, if this is a 90% uh, furnace, you're going to check the vent. If there's a screen in it, is the screen plugged? Combustion air, if there's a screen in it, is the screen plugged? Those things are simple things you can do right off the bat. And you may be able to find the problem without any further uh, diagnosis. Okay, if you have done those things and you still have a problem where well, the pressure switch does not make, then we have to start looking a little closer. Okay, uh, now I'm showing a couple of pressure switches here on this furnace. And if you note right there, it says 0.94 inches water column. Okay, that pressure switch should make at 0.94 inches of water column. Okay, when using a pressure switch like uh, these here, uh, we've got these two, they're manifolded, and then they go up to the uh, combustion chamber and tap in here. The easiest way to find out if there's a problem with this after you check for screens is just to pop this thing off. If the unit starts when you popped it off, then you know that's where your problem is and you look farther there. If it doesn't make any difference, then you're back down to these uh -huh. pressure switches. You can see this a little better. You can see this piece of tubing back here that goes into the back side of the pressure switch and you should read 0.94 inches if I was to pull that off or put a T in it um, and put my uh, manometer on there. Uh, and guys a manometer is pretty much required on these furnaces anymore. Guessing is not going to work. This one does tell you what the pressure is that it's going to make at so you got it right there. Uh, and if it's not that high, then you're going to have to start looking for reasons why. You know, I mean, there could be all kinds of things. Uh, you know, if you're reading less than the uh, 0.94, don't replace the pressure switch. Because the pressure switch is doing its job. You don't have enough vacuum. Now, you could have an inducer that's failing. Uh, you know... Blower wheels come apart, usually they make noise, 
Uh, but that can be it. You can have something going on with it. Uh, but there's all kinds of other things. Remember, assume the pressure switch is good to start with and see if you can find out why it's showing it's shutting down on protection. Now some of these pressure switches do not have the vacuum printed on them. And that's kind of a problem because usually it's not on the furnace any place. I have seen that they actually did have it on the model and serial plate. But for the most part they don't. If it's not there, you know it's actually your responsibility to find out what it should be. Uh, it may be a little tough and you maybe have to call a couple of people, but if you don't know what the vacuum is and it's not pulling enough vacuum to make the pressure switch, then the next thing is find out what it should be. Don't use general replacement pressure switches. When we first got into this industry, I did. Like everybody else, we had all kinds of problems with pressure switches, changing them all the time, never fixed it. Found out we weren't venting the furnaces right. Uh, one of the common things on some of these furnaces is if your vent pipe sags. If that vent pipe sags a little bit, it gets some water in it, reduces the cross-sectional area of the pipe, and the unit shuts down. Can happen right away, can happen after a couple of years. So pressure switches, factory ones are the only ones. If you don't know what the pressure is or should be, then you really need to find out. And that's it on uh, pressure switch failures.